I lunch ke baad it's difficult. I think uh, many participants yet to join, I believe. But still, we will start. Thank you for those kind words, ma'am. And uh, these sessions always empower me and give me a lot of uh, uh, energy to really learn myself many more things. I hope you all can see the screen now. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay, great, great. So uh, I just shared... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, form with you all dear participants just to understand um, how uh, well you are equipped how uh, equipped you are with the kind of uh, resource that we are, are about to discuss today so that's why I asked you all to fill that actually I would like to share that uh, tab instead of uh, this now um, because I just want to discuss with you all because there are people who have already um, are very much aware of interactive content. Today's session is all about interactive content. So let me share that screen with you once. Yeah. Okay. This screen is black. I don't know why I'm sharing. Yeah. So I think around 87 replied. And what I wanted exactly here is the two important questions. Because about interactive content, today we will discuss uh, First interactive content, then we'll talk about a tool. The tool is H5P. So I asked because uh, re in recent uh, years, when I started, that is seven years back, it was hardly known by anyone. And now it is very much popular across the globe and also in India. Our India may be bohat sari jankari mil chuki hai H5P ke bare mein. तो मैं जानना चाहती थी कि आप में से कौन-कौन है जो HYP के बारे में ऑलरेडी सुना है और यूज भी किया हुआ है तो अभी देखते हुए मुझे फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन का हैव यू हर्ड अबाउट HYP का आंसर्स में मिला है ऑलमोस्ट 50-50 बट देन अगर किसी ने यूज किया है तो उसमें 70 ऑलमोस्ट 77% ऑफ यू अमंग अ 180 पार्टिसिपेंट्स में नहीं आंसर दिया हुआ है नहीं आपने कभी यूज नहीं किया हुआ है सरप्राइजिंग आंसर्स दिस टू सो लुकिंग एट दिस सो लुकिंग एट दिस आई वुड लाइक टू कंटिन्यू माय प्रेजेंटेशन सो दैट मुझे समझ में आएगा कि कितना रियली जानकारी है इसके बारे में और मुझे कौन सा एरियाज में फोकस करना है ये मुझे समझ में आएगा ठीक है तो लेट्स स्टार्ट अवर प्रेजेंटेशन सो दिस इज अबाउट इंटरैक्टिव रिसोर्सेस आई थॉट टिल थ्री थर्टी वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट इंटरैक्टिविटी इन द टीचिंग एंड ट्रेनिंग प्रोसेस एंड व्हाट इज एक्चुअली इंटरैक्टिव कंटेंट एंड व्हाई इट इज are really relevant in the pedagogical aspects of it too we will discuss or kaise create kar sakte hain kaun se tools hain kya hai uske bare mein bhi thoda jankari aur uske baad 345 se hum ek tool mein focus karenge h5p aur aap sab log by the end of this session evening by 5 o'clock you will be able to generate content with open license अभी तक आपने तो ओ के बारे में सुने होंगे ओपन एजुकेशनल रिसोर्सेस और ओपन लाइसेंसेस के बारे में तो हम वो लाइसेंस अप्लाई करके हम अच्छा सा एक इंटरैक्टिविटी छोटा सा इंटरैक्टिविटी बनाएंगे लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो व्हाट इज दैट कम्स टू योर माइंड आपके दिमाग में इंटरैक्टिव कंटेंट ऐसा सोचते ही आपके दिमाग में क्या आता है टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस में अगर आप इंटरैक्टिव कंटेंट के बारे में सोच रहे हैं तो आपके मन में कौन सा वर्ड्स आएंगे कौन सा वाक्य आता है 
अगर इंटरक्टिविटी के बारे में आप सोच रहे हैं अगर आपके टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस में आप चैट में दे सकते हैं आंसर्स सो दिस इज माई क्वेश्चन टू यू ऑल दट इज इंटरक्टिव कॉन्टेंट के बारे में सोचते ही आपके मन में आपके दिमाग में क्या आता है इमीडिएटली इमीडिएटली डोंट गूगल इट यू जस्ट एक्सप्रेस योर सेल्फ लेट्स नॉट गूगल इट ओके और इंटरक्टिव कॉन्टेंट के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं तो सेशन भी इंटरक्टिव होना चाहिए दैट्स वॉट आई एक्सपेक्ट आई वॉन्ट अ वेरी गुड इंटरक्शन फ्रॉम यू ऑल ओके एंड प्लीज फोकस कीजिए एवरी स्लाइड पे एवरी वर्ड पे देन यू विल बी एबल टू रियली क्रिएट अ वंडरफुल कॉन्टेंट मैंने एक क्वेश्चन पूछा है आपसे वॉट फ्रेज दट कम्स टू योर माइंड when you think about interactive content in your teaching learning process agar aap chote bachon ko padha rahe hain nahi to k12 se aage 11th aur 12th ko padha rahe hain to kya aata hai aapke mann mein aapke dimag mein chat mein aap de sakte hain answers but don't google it okay just type what comes to your mind भागीदारी या कम्युनिकेशन ठीक है इन्वॉल्वमेंट ऑफ लर्नर्स कंटेंट फॉर बोथ टीचर एंड टॉट ओके एंगेजिंग एंड पार्टिसिपेटिंग वीडियो क्वेज पी पी टी ओके विच एंगेज स्टूडेंट्स ओके पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ बोथ लर्नर एंड टीचर या टू वे कम्युनिकेशन प्ले वे मेथड ठीक है बट डोंट गूगल इट ओके कम्युनिकेशन विद चिल्ड्रन स्टूडेंट इन्वॉल्वमेंट स्टूडेंट बिलिंग स्टार्ट लर्निंग इंटरक्टिव वीडियोज हाँ दैट इज वॉट आई एम आस्किंग अगर इंटरक्टिव वीडियोज अगर इंटरक्टिविटी के बारे में सोच रहे हैं तो क्या आता है आपके मन में बोथ साइड कम्युनिकेशन एंड नॉलेज शेयरिंग इन्वॉल्वमेंट बियॉन्ड टेक्स्ट बुक ठीक है कंटेंट कम्युनिकेट्स विथ लर्नर वेरी गुड वेरी गुड वेन स्टूडेंट ऑल्सो पार्टिसिपेट इन कम्युनिकेशन स्टूडेंट बिकम मोर एक्टिव एंड एंगेज इन क्लास ठीक है असेसमेंट प्रेजेंटेशन कंटेंट दैट स्टूडेंट्स कैन इंटरक्ट विथ ओके इन्वॉल्वमेंट एंड इंटरक्शन ठीक है very much familiar and easy to grasp the content active involvement more engaging gaming very good participation involvement of whole class students content to be controlled by user theek hai very good now let me show you the dictionary definition i hope uh, it's okay if i switch off my video and then continue with the slides because i am uh, seeing uh, my connectivity is a bit low so let me show you the dictionary definition of um it is uh, from an online dictionary cambridge dictionary okay we are talking about interactivity so it talks about the involvement of users in the exchange of information okay with computers because now the context that we are talking is a hybrid classroom and the degree to which this happens this is to be noted okay uh, i will discuss more about this to which degree that it happens i will discuss it but thank you so much those are wonderful answers that's why i said not to google it just write what you think right some people said a communication yes that definitely matters the involvement of users in the exchange of information with computers and degree to which this happens remember this okay when uh, talking about this interaction and interactivity okay um what well, we have to consider various processes also uh, 
several factors that comes to our mind. They might include, like you just expressed yourself, the communication between uh, the teacher and students, and the use of active learning strategies, opportunities for collaboration, right? And uh, also immediate role that plays is a constructive feedback. They say that feedback it is not effective until unless the user, I mean, to whomever you have given the feedback, jisko apne jo feedback diya tha, wo feedback de ke apna learning curve ko thoda improve kar sake. To wo improvement as a teacher, agar aap dek sake to, that is called a successful feedback mechanism. Feedback definitely constructive hona chahiye, that's true. Uh, lekin wo feedback jab successful hota hai, tab agar आपके स्टूडेंट ने आपके विद्यार्थी अच्छे से आपके फीडबैक को लेके अपना लर्निंग इंप्रूव कर सके तब ओके एंगेजिंग एंड इंटरैक्टिव टीचिंग मेथड्स दीस डेज दे प्ले अ मेजर रोल इन आवर टीचिंग लर्निंग एनवायरनमेंट ठीक है तो then let's talk about more about this interactivity. Jab aap interactivity ke word ke baare mein soche to wo kaisa hua, kaisa aya. It's a very interesting, uh, interesting uh, um, story behind it. You should read about it actually. In a nutshell, if I, if I should say that this interactivity that comes from a Latin language word interactio, which means inter, means common between and actio means action. So interactivity is one of the characteristics of the dialogue forms of process of learning, we can say. So in this uh, uh, context, when we are talking about interactivity, many of you replied a uh, communication, learner, um, content ke saath communicate karna or content jaisa respond hota hai osa, like so students, if you don't give feedback constructive, if you don't give interactivity to interactivity, then it is merely a passive observer. Like now in the, uh, in the talk now, in this uh, talk, I am talking, and then you are just observing the talk now, in this talk now, you are just observing the um, my slides and then listening to it passively, right? Yeah, unless I ask you, I involve you um, asking some questions to reply to it or to express your thought processes uh, about the topic that I am teaching. Unless I engage learners, then it won't be really an active learning environment that we create. We have to keep these uh, big types, three types of interaction in mind in current teaching and learning scenario, right? So they are very, very essential for learning and engagement according to M.G. Moore. Uh, this is proposed way back in 1989. That is a learner-learner interaction. The first one is learner-learner interaction. This is where, uh, like we say, a pure interaction, right? So, but then when it comes to a hybrid classroom or in a blended classroom, how these kind of opportunities are created for learners to interact with other learners, right? For example, what do you do uh, in a class? This is my question again to you. If you want to improve a peer interaction or peer interaction um, ke zariye ek assessment ja, uh, dena chahte hai. Toh, uh, agar ab kaise conduct karenge wo? This is my question to you. Agar learner-learner interaction hona chahiye, group discussion, thik hai, very good. Group discussion. That's that's good, uh, Guruvinder Kaurji. Yes, peer learning and peer evaluation bhi ho sakta hai. Agar apne face to face class mein, ha quiz. Agar face to face class mein apne kuch uh, questions diya. Playing games, yes. Gamification, project work, group assessment, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Very good, very good. Doing an activity, excellent. 
अगर आपने आ, कुछ असेसमेंट दिया हुआ है और आ, आपने इवेल्युएट करने के लिए कुछ रूब्रिक दिया हुआ है आई होप यू ऑल आर अवेयर ऑफ रूब्रिक देन यू कैन आस्क रैंडमली यू कैन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट दो असेसमेंट पेजेस टू द अदर स्टूडेंट लाइक स्टूडेंट ए आंसर शीट कैन गो टू स्टूडेंट डी and then they have a rubric to assess that so then a peer evaluation can happen right it's there is a huge text here from uh, learner learner interaction refers to the communication collaboration and exchange ideas oh my god kahan se aaya hai agar aapne type kiya hai to wonderful debates a form of peer to peer engagement excellent okay very good yeah so that's what i'm talking about learner learner interaction agar yeah this is a uh, learner learner ke beech mein agar aap kuch uh, exchange kar rahe hain notes yes definitely but then i hope now you can i hope now you can listen to me right my voice yes okay fantastic so that's why i just uh, um, cut down my video so that uh, the voice will be good so we are talking about these three uh, big types of interactions usually we come across not only in a hybrid classroom even in a face to face classroom too but then today's environment is more about a blended learning approach and a hybrid classroom and definitely we have to think about in those lines when you are doing a technology enhanced learning how can you create these kind of interactions that you have to think a lot about it right so we talked about learner learner interaction then comes learner and teacher or you can say learner and instructor interaction how it can take place it can have a multiple form right through various uh, means of communication channels that are available depending upon the technology that you are using inside a technical uh, environment the technology enabled learning environment that you are in that is provided by your institution or even when you are in a face to face classroom right so how do you interact there is a multiple ways that you can directly communicate with your learner directly communicate with your a uh, student or uh, in a group to everyone right either privately or with everyone you can uh, maybe call them a particular students where whose learning curve is very low or uske bare mein aap discuss karna chahte ho then uh, you can always discuss about it theek okay? hai so uh, yeah in assembly or in a classroom through you if you have a system yeah yeah these are all ways that you interact with them oh, of course gamification plays a major role right a bulletin board use kar sakte hain aap uh, agar uh, um, through in you know, office hours also you can discuss with them so instructor interacts teacher interacts with students individually or as a group right whole class like frequently this happens for example if you are in a blended learning mode and you are using any learning management system um to communicate to them about upcoming examinations or important questions that they have to uh, really focus on important topics that they have to focus on to um really give their talk on so and so day then you will be giving them you know announcement way announcement in a bulletin board in a form right you will be sending them or you can have a individual channel where you will send privately some reply to them regarding discussing about their progress in the class anything about anything right that interaction and now the third one is the third one is i'm really liking in the chat you people are really active really active that's good 
you are playing uh, you are you are a multitasker you are listening to it and you are typing in the chat about the topic that we are discussing excellent so the third one we are talking about is a big uh, type of interaction is learner content interaction right this is this is very very important one and today we will be discussing about this a lot too because we are creating interactive content right so learner content interactions learner can interact with the course content yeah it could be books videos diksha platform excellent yes but then uh, how do they interact to what degree you remember the definition of it multimedia activities hai aapka interactive videos ho sakta hai quiz ho sakta hai koi um, project bhi ho sakta hai kabhi kabhi ha collaborative worksheet ha ha see tools can be anything tools can be merely they just are tools for teachers right in that teaching learning environment agar learner content interactivity ke bare mein hum baat kare to definitely what comes to uh, in into the picture is the definitions word about the to what degree if you talk about if you talk about um to what degree then we i have to explain here i don't know whether i have a slide on that i don't think i have a slide on that but then i'll take a few moments about explaining about this level of interactions if you go to yeah content uh, taking immediate feedback excellent excellent information about learner content interaction but then to what degree that is what we are discussing now right to what degree if you ask anyone about uh, um what level of interaction if you ask anyone outsider to develop an interactive course uh, private uh, um freelancers who develop interactive courses if you ask them they definitely will ask you that at what level of interactivity that you are looking for so what are these levels it's again a huge subject but then i'll try to make it very simple uh, in a simple terms that is usually we consider four uh, levels of interactions right okay um in instructional design um language that we if we talk those four levels are 0 1 2 and 3 at 0 level 0 is like your there will be some text information clickable options nature of the subject and target definitely of course that we will talk about it too later in, i have a slide on that okay but then we have to understand the degree of interaction too okay yeah? uh yeah you can name it, it, it it's your a uh, way of uh, naming it low moderate medium or high 0 1 2 3 is a instructional designer's point of view that is only um merely some uh, um text information is given and you will be clicking on that and you will be reaching there to another static text content and then when it comes to level 1 there will be some audio or uh, sometimes video very rarely okay uh, but then you will have a navigation option definitely to go forward or to come back in that content when it goes to the third one definitely lot of interactivity that you can add over there not only uh, while watching um, like uh, in the first level what we thought is only we provide a video or a audio where they can move forward and backward when it comes to level 2 that is i'm talking about 0 1 2 you can ask a question to your user yeah in between and then they can respond to it and then as a teacher passively you can even observe that right when it comes to a higher level that is level 3 0 1 2 3 the higher level is more about augmented reality and the virtual reality of course now we have a wonderful um, uh, artificial intelligence uh, worlds right now they were created among where uh, one can get an immersive learning that we call it get into that world and learn about a lot of many lot many things and uh, the time is uh, not very far that we all will be learning about creating 
interactive uh, interactive worlds too very soon okay somebody answered uh, here a comic strip too like how um a learner interacts with the content yes definitely but then when you ask them to um narrate something about that comic strip or something and then you respond to it and the content responds to that response then that will become a technology enhanced interactive content right so definitely what we can say is this interactivity this interactivity when we incorporate for example you have a, um, a textbook with some questions like in Diksha platform, we see that uh, many PDFs and documents are there on the right hand side. If you click on interactions, then you will see the lessons and then some, some have and some didn't have, but then there is an option to add interactive content over there. So what happens is there will be definitely um, active participation. Uh, of your learners, of your students, where instructor or teacher can observe about it, right? How they are really interacting with the content and they can track the learner's behavior, not just about the, uh, the time that they spend on that particular piece of content, but also there are many quality metrics that you can analyze depending upon the environment that you are in, again, there the technology plays a role. It's not a rocket science. It, there will be many tools that are available to track the learner's behavior. That is, again, from merely time to many other advanced options. And then most importantly, interactive content provides us an opportunity to communicate. Somebody said in the very beginning when I asked what comes to your mind, when we uh, think about uh, interactivity in teaching learning process, two-way communication. Yeah, they, where a learner can interact with the content and the content in turn interact with the student, again, the learner, right? And, but who creates that content? That is created by the teacher, right? So the, between uh, this communication happens both ways. So a teacher can also communicate uh, with the student in the form of a feedback and the learner can uh, apply that feedback next time when he does that, right? So active learning and passive learning, th these two distinct approaches are very uh, important. Um, don't think, do not think that passive learning never helps. Definitely, sometimes it also helps. And again, it depends upon the scenario that you are in. So these two distinct approaches helps to acquire the knowledge and skills. So uh, when it comes to active learning, that involves uh, definitely critical thinking and problem solving options. Like passive learning is right now is happening is more of a listening and observing and memorizing too. Sometimes it is needed, right? So both have... Uh, their advantages and pros and cons, like we say, right? Advantages and disadvantages. And it is really essential to understand the difference between the two, okay? And also, uh, when we talk about these two approaches, we have to think about, like, when is the right time to implement uh, active learning and when is the right uh, time and when, what is the content that whether it is really demanding us to give them an active learning approach or not. We have to decide on that as a teacher, definitely. Okay, now give me some examples of any interactive content that you use. Don't just tell me about a PPT or a quiz. Okay, what are the other approaches that you you really uh, uh, you really want to, or you already implementing even in a face to face classroom interactive content that you will. Let me see in the chat.
So picture composition, role plays, that's good. Kahoot play karenge, thik hai. Haan, ho sakta hai. Agar aapke environment allow kar rahe hai to. Agar technology uh, enabled classroom hai to. Haan. Or bring your own device kind of thing you are doing, then it's good. Thik hai. Google form use karte hai aap. In the class? Oh, okay. Virtual lab, okay. Mm -hmm. Agar aap, uh, okay, when you are pre presenting a presentation, okay. Nee. Okay, then see, uh, Somebody asked me about a flip T tool that uh, for their worksheets or Google Forms. But then will uh, be the students be able to access them? Are they carrying their mobiles in the class? Then it's good. Or maybe you have ICT lab, they said. Okay, that's good. Displaying a video and ask students about their reflections on the video. Theek hai. That's a good way of interaction too. Uh -huh. Seminar presentation by students. Theek hai. Image hotspots. Yani ki, uh, kaise use karte hai aap? Class mein uh, display karenge or you are ask the students to touch that hotspot and then observe and learn from them. Okay. Duolingo. Okay. भाषा के ज्ञान के लिए ठीक है लेकिन ये सब ये सब मेरी डाउट ये है कि अगर मोबाइल या कोई किसी तरह के टैबलेट या लैपटॉप इज अलाउड इनसाइड अ क्लासरूम हाउ आर यू डूइंग ऑल दिस और यू हैव अ टेक्नोलॉजी एनहांस्ड क्लासरूम और यू हैव अ लैब वेयर एवरी स्टूडेंट विल हैव अ कंप्यूटर इन फ्रंट ऑफ देम और अ डिवाइस इन फ्रंट ऑफ देम ICT labs, okay. ठीक है. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I meant here is, my question is, uh, sorry, I, I'm, I'm supposed to share a whiteboard. I think I asked in the chat. I'm sorry for that. So, uh -huh, flashcards. It's a good idea if it is a physical class flashcard when you are in a um face to face classroom. Yeah, yeah. If there is no IT, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, smart boards, and in between you can play something. Yeah. So every teacher and every um Environment will have its own uh, advantages, right? And teacher never stops teaching. Clickers interactive for interactive panels. Theek hai. Projector use karenge aap. Theek hai. Theek hai. So uh, like whatever the environment that you are in as a teacher, you will try to do your best to engage your learners. Here with all these, whatever the answers that you have given here, Pitara, Jadio Pitara, okay, okay. So whatever you use here, so what, what it does is to engage your learners, right? To act, you are creating an active classroom, <coughs> active participation of your students that you want to create that kind of an active teaching, learning environment, TK. And while creating interactive content, this is one thing that I want to discuss with you all is I want to really, um, again and again, I want to um, press upon this slide is about like, see, interactivity in the classroom can be, uh, as somebody showed uh, wonderful options just now we saw in the chat, right? It depends upon the kind of environment that you are in. Of course, but then let the situation demand. Somebody said like uh, 
to create interactivity, the subject should demand. Yeah, the topic should demand. It's not merely, um, okay, let me see the chat here. Dramatization of content like role plays, interviews, and panel discussions. They really help and students love them. Ah, that this is the answer that I was waiting for. Taking the students outside the classroom and show them outside surroundings. Yeah, field trips. That's what you meant, right? Um, sometimes you can do even a virtual field trip too. But then if it is a younger kid, uh, that is a younger classes, it's always good. Uh, first time you take them to a field, for example, you are explaining about uh, green fields. It's good. If you have a field in your surrounding, you can take them or in a small garden. And then you're talking about uh, a life cycle that how a plant grows, right? You you can always take them there and then uh, teach them or show them or sow the seeds. And after a few weeks, you can uh, your students can observe and see that every day they come and they observe what happened to their seed, right? That is also a kind of interaction that interactivity that you are creating. But then these are all comes like when when the subject really demands, right? Even for a language teaching. That interactivity really uh, plays a major role, right? And so, so like this, not only that, we have to consider the content, the topic that you are teaching that should demand that kind of uh, active learning choices. And also we have to consider moreover, very, very important is that learner needs. Like, um, um, also that they should have that access to that particular device that what you are, for example, somebody said they play Kahoot. You know, when Kahoot launched in the earlier days, in the very, very early days, right? Um, it was never possible um, for a learner to see the answers and also those marks at the same time. But now it is possible. So when you have a classroom with the, uh, all the technical devices that is needed to play that particular game piece, right? So you can provide them and then learner will also be very excited to play along with you the game, right? But then whether they, they have that access or not. For example, uh, students may lose interest if that uh, content doesn't really require such kind of a involvement. Right. Because, you know, because you have an access, because um, you got introduced to that tool, please don't consider that to create interactive content. Let the situation demand, let the content demand and consider your learner's needs. Avoid adding interactivity just for the sake of it, please. OK, so the, uh, the interactivity should be added and active learning uh, in an active learning environment where the topic is uh, is really required uska demand hona chahiye agar wo topic aisa sikha hai to usko acche se samajh mein aayega and also your learners will enjoy our job is as teachers not only engage our learners but also give them involvement right from their heart they should also get entertained at the same time they should get engaged they should do an active participation to grab the knowledge that you are providing them you are disseminate right okay so let's get on to the job now today's session is all about uh, interactive content creation right Huh. Sonam ji bol rahe hai, remote area mein we don't have network facility. Ho sakta hai. Tab aap kya kar rahe honge? Shayad aap aisa tools use kar rahe honge jiska network ki zarurat na ho. Offline mein kaam kar sake. Jase aapke paas ek hi laptop ho jis mein sab log aake milke group work jaisa enjoy kar sake. Shayad wo bhi kar sakte honge aap. Right. So it is well, when there is a will, there is a way. When there is no network, if there is a power, yes, there is a possibility. I'll tell you an example here. Uh, I'm not discouraging, but then I'm trying to encourage. Uh, if you don't have somebody says that, uh, do you have an LMS for your school kids? They say that we don't have 
uh, enough power nor the technology uh, and enhanced classrooms. So we don't really get. But then for your school, you, you might be having basic power options, a basic computer, then somebody is bothering about attendance. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> but everybody, everyone is after digital presence. Let me tell you, let me explain you. Yeah, let me give you this example. There is a possibility of a small device. Okay, we call it a Raspberry Pi, where we load a learning management system or a library system, uh, library system with stories from, uh, I don't know how many of you heard about uh, IIT is one of the IIT's initiative story weaver where you can go and write stories and translate stories and I myself do sometimes and even kids enjoy that as a project to work right so they, you can load all those stories and those stories are like class-wise segregated and stem related learning it's wonderful site by the way so those story weaver stories can be loaded into that small machine and then it can be streamed in one computer in the power required for that is simply a um like your power bank right yeah so uh, Sonama, like when it comes to uh, when it comes to a digital technology enhanced learning we cannot stop it right and uh, the generation now really uh, demands it but then to what extent to what degree it is required and the situation that you are in and then how you can provide with the basic amenities that's how you have to more think about it but definitely uh, non-digital way of teaching and approaches I'm not saying they are bad they're wonderful they're perfect definitely they give more than 100% results but then when you blend the both approaches results will be awesome no doubt about it okay let's get on to uh, the creation part interactive content creation part there are various tools available how do we create this interactive content? We call them authoring tools. Like when you write a book, you're called as an author, right? But you write a journal, you're an author of that particular piece of writing. Similarly, in uh, instructional design parlance or e-learning parlance, like the tools that to help you to create interactive content are known as authoring tools. There are many authoring tools available outside. There could be some free ones. There will be some premium ones. There could be some open source ones. So, right, there will be commercial ones, right? So how do you differentiate them? What is a premium one? Like, for example, you have a tool that you can use it with the basic uh, mm, uh, options, that is free. And then if you need certain things, you have to pay some amount, a premium, right? That is a freemium ones. Or free tools are the tool is free for you. All the options are given to you. Um, but then there will be some restrictions definitely will be there. When it comes to proprietary or a commercial tools, you have to purchase it to utilize, right? And when it comes to open source, so what is it? Uh, what is it called? Why it is called an open source? Because the application source code is available to the public. If you have resources, you can enhance it. Not only its look and feel of it, but also its functionality. That's called the open source application. Open source software. The on top where the applications are built. There are many open source authoring tools too to create interactive content. In earlier days, we used to use many other um, interactive content authoring tools, which are open source. Uh, I remember one of them as Hot Potatoes too. Okay, and the past eight years, the famous ones. Yeah, free and open. What is the difference? Yeah, free and open source. The difference between, somebody asked free, free and uh, uh, open source. The difference between these two is some free tools, of course, not some, all free tools may not be open source, but all open source are free. Let me put it this way, because the application might be providing you um, an interface to play around with it. 
but then you don't have access to its source code of that particular application to change the way you want it. Not only the functionality, but also look and feel of it. Yeah, that is the difference. But then when it comes to open source, you can customize the piece. Uh, if you have a resource, if you have a coding expert, the way you want it, the way you want it. Not only its behavior, also its look and feel, the interface, colors, everything. Um, what is the copyright issues here? Licensing and copyright issues. I didn't get it here. If you buy a proprietary tool to create interactive content and you create an interactive content, that content is yours. That is, the, license, the, the author is you. That license belongs to you, but not the product's license, right? I hope I'm clear on this. Open source also uh, have its own license, but then it permits others to utilize it. It's a source code to alter it the way they want it. Let's not get too deep into technology now. We are talking to teachers and how to create a interactive content and we are talking about open source and free tools. Uh, yeah, open source software is free and publicly available is, see, again, let me put it this way. Open source softwares are free and uh, available as a package, but then it needs an environment to run. I'll tell you, uh, usually I'll take this analogy, like uh, uh, these days 3D printing is quite common and the uh, houses are also printed in 3D and they take it and they assemble it, right? So for example, my friend in somewhere in Chennai um, to Kulu Manali somewhere sent me a 3D printed wonderful four bedroom house. I can customize it the way I want it. I can make it four bedroom or three bedroom or simply one hall, big hall and no bedrooms and a huge house. But then where do I keep it? I should have a place, right? Jaga hona chahiye, jaga jaha par ye jo... 3D print kiya hua ghar hai, usko lagane ke liye jaga hona chahiye. So like this, open source softwares are customizable and uh, its functionality and look and feel it, but then they need an environment to run, right? So somebody wrote, open source softwares can be edited and distributed again, due source code available. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, right? So it is available, but then they need a platform and they need an environment. For example, you got a learning management system, Moodle. That's an open source software. But then how do you run it? You need a server space, either your machine or in a cloud space, right? If you're running in your machine, yes, obviously freely you can run it. But then if you want to share publicly, you need a public IP, right? For that, you must pay or you uh, you buy the cloud uh, space, server space, and you host this application over there. You don't have to pay for the application. You are paying for the server space. I hope I'm clear about this. This is more technical. And if it is really going on top of others, don't bother it. Just learn about this one sentence that is open source and free software requires an environment to run. And then for them, they require a, um, a cloud space or a space in your machine to run. The application you don't, for the application, you need not to pay for it. That's about open source one. Okay. I hope I am clear. And one of the open source authoring tools um, that we talk about is today. In today's session, we'll talk about H5P. And uh, what is this H5P? What we can do with this H5P? We'll talk about it. H5P is a short uh, form of HTML5. Um, they named it as so and eight years back. And um, and uh, it, it runs, it just requires a browser to run the content that is developed using a H5P software, okay? It is a open source and free. And moreover, it is responsive. What do you mean by what do you mean by responsive? It is according to the screen size that you are viewing, it will adjust the content 90%, right? 
and uh, easy to use, create, share, and modify. When it comes to authoring tools in earlier days, um, some or even now I think some authoring tools, uh, commercial ones too. Uh, I'm not pretty sure though nowadays, but then once upon a time, hi, this is how it is. Like when you develop an interactive content, it requires a player. It requires a player to be downloaded onto your machine to run that particular content piece. Even now, uh, some interactive contents, when you are accessing it uh, in the browser, they di directly they don't display. There's some uh, loading or some uh, thing will come. And then what it, it does is the browser gets the player to run that particular piece of content. So unlike that, H5P needs just a web browser to run their content. It's based on HTML5. And it is not only easy to create as a teacher or as an author, uh, but also it's easy for the user, end user, that is a student, to access it, right? To communicate with it, to interact with it. And as an author, as a teacher, you can not only create it, but you can also modify it and down reuse it and share it, but then respect the copyright. So what we can do with H5P. You can create, you just named various types of uh, interactions, right? Uh, interactive videos, hotspots, whatnot, MCQs, and you said many, but along with the feedback, you can create wonderful drag and drops too. And more than 40 varieties of content types are there. But then you have to always start small. The most important part of uh, this uh, content authoring tool is that diverse way of this uh, of uh, uh, types, content types that you can create, but also feedback mechanism that they provide. The content varies, various types of contents are there. Um, as I said, more than 50 varieties, that's what H5P uh, website says, more than 50 varieties. But then most of them, <coughs> are like your um, layout um, uh, building options. Like for example, if you take an accordion, that is one of the uh, softwares, uh, types, content types, sorry, not software, content types that you can develop using H5P is a layout uh, building option where you can um, create a content that you can give a definition and uh, you can give a word and a definition can be hidden inside that when a user clicks that and then they can see the definition, right? But these are all only presentation ones. You cannot really add any activity to it. You, you can, you can, the user can interact with the content, but they cannot really participate to test their knowledge. Remember, once again, one more important thing, once again, I want to utter this, um, especially this, uh, as of today, as of today, H5P uh, content types are used uh, merely for uh, formative assessment or not, or you can call it a knowledge checks right? Um, Pre-knowledge or post-knowledge checks that you can create, but not for a summative assessment. Remember this, summative assessment ke liye HYP hum use nahi karte hai, formative assessment ke liye use karte hai. Knowledge pre-check ke liye ya aap, um, diagnostic assessment ke liye bhi sometimes use kar sakte hai. There are various types. This one, this periodic table kind of a structure, um, I got inspired from Stuart Miller's way of presenting uh, um, H5P content in a periodic table. But then I thought as part of my one of my open uh, education project, I thought like, let me segregate these 50 tools into different ways, like presentation tools where we can just present the content or you can say layout tools. Just to lay out your content, these content types will help you. And then you can present with some tasks right? Uh, not, you can not only present the text and the video and the audio, but also you can incorporate some elements like your drag and drops or questions or extra information that you want to provide them or images that you, more images that you want to provide on that particular piece of a video, then you can use these orange ones like column or course presentation, interactive book, interactive video, branching scenarios, or even AR scavenger. 
right and then comes to uh, your pink ones usually these ones are not really um somebody shared a screenshot of h5p.org okay let me i haven't come there how we can create this content type sir i'm still discussing about various types of h5p content types that you can develop this static image got into live action with the help of a h5p image hotspots i will share that too uh, after this uh, um, presentation for you to explore it okay so then uh, now these are the various types various ways various varieties of h5p content types that you can create okay this is again uh, launched with uh, cc by license this image so how can you create either you should have a h5p enabled website right or um, you should have a software as a service plan from h5p.com as i said h5p uh, is a free and open source uh, software package but it needs an environment so what these h5p.com people do is they give us um, they host our h5p content over there and give us an opportunity to keep all our content over there that is a SaaS uh, plan from h5p.com or you must be having a learning management system with a h5p plugin like you can have a canvas or you can have a Moodle or Blackboard or a Brightspace. But then uh, I don't have any learning management system. Neither I have a website that supports a free H5P plugin like your uh, content management systems, uh, Drupal or WordPress that supports a H5P free plugin, right? But then I don't have any of them. So what should I do? What you can do is you can... Uh, use uh, an application called Lumi either on cloud or offline on your machine. Whatever the way the, you use, the editor of the H5P is the same. Okay. And the last one is H5P catalog. That's the first of its kind in India for teachers to repurpose open educational resource to create interactive content. Last year and before last year for Open Education Week, that is in March, we did various create-a-thons and where teachers came forward and repurposed, reused open educational resources to create interactive content and we hosted it over there. So in a nutshell, to talk about it, H5P, uh, what you can do is you can create your content either in your content management system or a website or a learning management system. You can, if you use a Lumi application, desktop application, you can not only save your content as a HTML file to distribute to your students, but also as a SCOM packaging. But now I don't think many any of us really utilizing this shareable content object reference model earlier days we used to use this COM packaging system to package our interactive contents. Okay, let's uh, see. Any of you use uh, Moodle LMS? Any of you use a uh, Moodle LMS? Any school? No. Okay, let me skip this because I just to keep these uh, slides for you to explain how it looks in a learning management system. Okay, no problem, no problem. Okay. So then uh, when you talk about a Lumi desktop application, um, Lumi desktop application, you can download and this is the interface where you can see the uh, H5P editor. The advantage with this Lumi desktop application is you can create an all-in-one one HTML file where you can distribute this file with your users. You can send them with a reporting mechanism too. It is possible, but the reporting and the analysis is in a very nascent stage. Okay, there is a process to do it. Okay, uh, Manodhar Kumarji, there are options. Uh, without network two to use Moodle inside the school. Okay, as I, I, I earlier, I just explained in offline too, you can utilize, okay, in a lab network. I don't want to go too technical about it. Yeah, so now um, you can analyze uh, that HTML file details too in Lumi Analytics when you use a Lumi desktop application. The other option is to create 
your um, content and share it with the open license in a Lumi Cloud option that is app.lumi.education. So what we do is today, uh, all of you, I request that all of you to register here with your Gmail ID and app.lumi.education. Um, and uh, also I mentioned in one of the slides, I think, yeah, this slide, I want to repeat this slide here. It says hyp.org is the website where all the activities are demonstrated and documented. It is not a place to create your content. Sorry to say this. And also many people say that I was surprised. A few years back, somebody came to me and said, oh, HYP is no longer free. I was surprised because I'm associated with HYP almost since its birth. I mean, I've been using it as a user. And later I got involved into various uh, projects, right? So, but then I was surprised. I was surprised. Uh, why not? It is an open source software. But then I understood that they're talking about hyp.org. Initial days, hyp.org provided an option for the teachers to test all the content types. But nowadays, I mean, because it is grown, it's it's huge across the world now. And then everybody started using it as for a real-time content, which is not good. And then how much anybody can give you a free space over there? Already they are providing a free HYP package, right? HYP.org is not a place to create your content. It's only a place to test. It's only a place to test and experience. For example, if there is any new content type that is launched and then you can go there and then you can experience it, you can create and you can see that. But otherwise, it's better to be part and be parcel of this HYP community in HYP.org to get to know what are the new uh, options that we have and then how we can create the new content types and their pedagogical values. Always my uh, advice is to start small. We just saw that there are more than 40 varieties, 50 varieties of uh, content types that you can create, whether layout-based ones or activity-based ones. But then you have to uh, you have to start very small. Take a single step, a simple step at a time. For example, if you see these content types, when you see these uh, yellow ones, right? Simple tasks there. When you create a multiple choice question first, you will understand wh what is the editor and how it looks like. Maybe you can create only one multiple choice question, but then you will get used to the interface first. Then you can move on to a single choice and then you can move on to... Um, question sets, then move on to drag and drops, right? I didn't understand this mobile battery near to death. Okay. <laughs> Please use a power bank. Okay. So, so you ha always have to start small. So when you go to app.lumi.education, let me type that here. Uh, I think we'll take a small break after this. Uh, meanwhile, let me give you this link here, app.lumi.education. And then I want all of you to register over there. You know, uh, but once you register there and once you log in, this is the interface that you see that I will explain step by step. What is there on the left hand side? What is this dashboard? How to create a content and how to import already created content, how to reuse them, and what is the editor? Okay, how we can create HYPs and uh, how we can share it with your users and how to share with the open license. These are all we will explore. But then remember, one slide I want to again. Uh, present here is all about planning. You have to plan well. And what kind of assessment type that you want to provide? And then what is that content uh, topic that is really demanding? Also, you have to think about lower order thinking skills and higher order thinking skills. If it is so, what kind of a content will be good to go there? And then if you are utilizing any pictures, make sure they are all openly licensed pictures. They're not free ones, 
openly licensed pictures. Okay. And if you are using any math or chemistry symbols, equations, make them ready. There is a way to do it. Um, I will share all the options or even in h5p.org, you have a very good documentation about all these options. Okay. So let us discuss all this about it. And then also it supports a multilingual. And uh, today I'll try to demo it in Hindi. Uh, Hindi exercise karenge Pariyavachi Shabd. Yeah, Esa. Uh, yeah. Lumi, Lumi desktop ke liye koi zarurat nahi hai ki aap register kare. You just have to download it. But today we are exploring on Lumi Cloud. Right? App.lumi.education. Go there and then register. Okay. Let me share that. Okay. And then we'll take a break after this. Hmm. Hmm. Let me log out. This is the URL. And uh, you provide your username. Okay, let me share my screen. I think I'm not sharing. Yeah, you give your username and your email address and a password and click on this. I agree to the terms and then click on register. Then you will be registered as a user. Once you register as a user, you will receive a mail and then agree to that mail. Click on that mail, come here again and then log in with the username and a password that you have provided here already. And then you will see the interface of whatever I just showed you in the the dashboard in the Lumi application. Okay. I hope I am clear on that. Yeah. Let's take a small break of for 10 minutes or so. <clears throat> yeah. Subscription page. It is just started. They just started the subscription option. Usually that's why, um, see, anybody who starts for free first with the open source uh, softwares, they definitely... In the future, they go with a subscription model because they have to survive. But right now, it is not asking. Yeah, I saw that message. But when you go down, you will see that uh, it is. Uh, yeah, so one, it is just they are asking that they are just. Username invalid आ रहा है इसलिए कि अगर आपके place में कुछ spaces ho ya yeah, english may type ki jiye please uh, in the username that will be better okay create uh okay once you arti city once you create your account please wait there please wait there yeah verify your email account aega up verify ki jiye and then be ready with let me log in and show you how it looks like. I hope I remember my password. Yeah. So this is where you are. They're saying that began a passion project by a teacher who wanted to bring interactive and engaging content to his classroom. Yeah, so they just need, uh, they, they, they're, they're pleading to uh, subscribe. That's why I started H5P catalog. So where um, teachers can come and register, but then the only option there is to repurpose open educational resources because I'm an open educator and I'm a supporter, open education advocate. Yeah, okay. Username, aapke choice ho? Yeah, you should be here. You should be here. So shall we take a break, uh, CIET team?
I just need a break for a water and a cup of tea. Can I take a 10 minutes break, please? Is anybody there? Uh, yes, ma'am. We can take a break of 10 minutes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, dear participants, please uh, register here and come to this screen and wait. Uh, from there, I'll take you forward. If there are any advanced users, you please explore yourself. Okay. Thank you. So, we are taking a break of 10 minutes and we will be back at 3.40.